curious. There, there, there. She followed him and soon found herself falling in a very deep hole into a strange place called Curious. Conversation. Curious. Conversation. So welcome everybody to episode 15 of Curious Conversations. Today we are going into the mystery of ritual and art and whatever else wants to come to the surface among this conversation. And I have three really epic guests, people that I have learned so much from in a lot of these people are quite new to my life in certain manners over the last few years of my life that have taught me a lot about ritual, magic, and arts that, yeah, I really want to give a platform to and have this conversation with and allow you to, yeah, move into the mystery with us and, and have a peek behind the curtain of mystery. So I'm going to go through and just do a little intro of everyone. Uh, and my way I love to introduce is actually just sharing how I know about you and and the impact. Just a little little window of impact that you've had, and then I'll give you all an opportunity to introduce yourself in a way that you like to be introduced. So we can we can do a one for one. And I'm going to start with Nyaniso Nyaniso Dzedzi, and. Where does Naniso come into my life? So first of all, Naniso is an actor, dancer, storyteller, just an all around epic change maker in arts and ritual magic. And I would say I first become aware of Naniso through his partner, Yana, who has also been on this podcast. And we slowly just connected and over the years have shared a lot of voice messages over WhatsApp and in just sort of connecting into one another's culture and just has taken on a certain level of brotherhood. And I would say Nyaniso is like a distant mentor of mine in just learning about being a man and, and being involved with culture and just watching the just immense impact that he's had over the years since first internet meeting because he's all the way over in South Africa uh, has just been so inspiring and, and one thing I'm extremely excited to talk about is this mixture of arts and and ritual and how he's continued just to manifest the most epic roles uh, in his life with his art, such as being able to, to work with Beyonce on a really big project, which we won't go too far into right now, but I just see you as someone that takes the work very serious, that constantly is in a space of manifesting and going deep. So then that can really lead into what you see uh, your future as in your career as an artist and as a mystic. So Nyaniso, if you would ever so kindly maybe do a little intro of yourself that maybe I missed out of out on, but yeah, thank you for being here. Hey, yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, everyone here and everyone that is going to be watching this later. Um, my name is Nyaniso Nzigelelo Tzetze. I am a South African Tosa black man. I am an artist in pretty much every discipline that Reese has um, stated. Um, by holistic practice and presence, I, I, I bring and guide people to um, emotional health um, as well as spiritual health. Um, I was raised in a culture of being very connected to the land and ancestry and ancestors. And that's pretty much been the foundation of my journey. Um, anything else that you are probably going to learn about me is going to come from the conversation, I guess. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much. I'm really excited for us to go deeper into yeah, this culture and, and this lineage of of work that you continue to bring to the world. 
So next I'm going to go to Janine because I feel like next is Janine that I sort of came on my radar. <sighs> okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. So the first time I met <laughs> Janine, I was so heartbroken. I had just been through a, like a relationship where I had my like first real sexual awakening, like my Kundalini had been activated. I had found this person that was like a unicorn and I had, I had in my opinion captured a unicorn and, and super magic being who I'm still connected to this day, but we had separated in a certain way it was a very ugly separation. And I felt like at that time I had lost my connection to magic. I had like sort of projected a lot onto this, this woman and Dane Thomas had came to mind somewhere in Sydney and he was like, Hey, we're going to this festival. I can't remember what it was called. It was like an Eros festival or something like that in Sydney. And He's like, there's this one woman that like, if, there's a million presenters, but this is just the one thing I want you to go to. And it's this lady called Janine. And we go in and there's this epic, powerful looking lady that's also quite like quiet and, and just sort of holding space. And she ends up leading us all into this uh like guided meditation shamanic realm of of process that goes through an initiation with a dakini and that's what i never like had heard of at this point and what i felt like i had projected this person to be that i had just broken up with was like the dakini of initiation for me and for me to be able to reclaim that as my own journey i bawled my eyes out like there's so many people there and I remember crying this hole down and it was just so cathartic and I was like this woman <laughs> I need to work with at some point in my life and continue to connect with and eventually I got to go to ISTA last year who you led ISTA 1 and 2 and got to have an extremely magical cathartic and nourishing journey with and you do so much in the world and we've connected again since then but yeah I would love for you to share a bit about who you are what you do because uh, yeah you're doing so much magic in the world with ista with hayden and with your red earth temple yeah there's this i'm sure you can rattle off a million things but if you would do the honor i'd love for you to introduce yourself janine basically <laughs> i didn't actually know that about eros festival i did never um, know your experience there so it was um yeah, it's beautiful to hear that. And Thank you for that. Thank you so much for that today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I guess it always, <laughs> it's always, always find it challenging to put something together as to, you know, who, who am I in the world or whatever. But, um, I guess I, <laughs> who I, are you today? I just, Just today. <laughs> who are you today? Exactly. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the things I do in the world is I um, facilitate spiritual sexual shamanic spaces um, and yeah create spaces for people to deeply journey not only into embodiment but also into the archetypal realms and the transpersonal and to get some sense of integration of those actually mm. some integration between embodiment and the shamanic and the ritual space and spiritual and bring that into into a grounded place in the body mm. um and also I've, I've i've had a big journey around womb work as well so um I, I have a passion around the feminine mysteries and the mysteries of matter and and the womb and the feminine archetype so that's been kind of a big part of my my work and that's also kind of led to the temple here, but the temple that I, I live on, which is 125 acres of wild land. And in more recent years, um, well, not even more recent years, but also passion with deeply connecting with the land and journeying deeper into matter and dreaming with the land and um, mm. it really coming 
through me as my teacher. I feel like there's, I feel like I'm in some kind of partnership. So um, I guess my juice is, is deepening that connection and um, yeah, this, this journey into land and, mm. and matter. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I, I, I love I love who you are today. I love I love this description of you, who you are today. And then last is offering. So actually, as I, as I've gone through and sort of introduced everyone, I did offerings was on my radar first, actually, but I feel like we properly connected only recently. So I don't know, however many years ago, maybe like five years ago, I was in Tasmania at a festival called New Kind, which is like a create your own reality post-apocalyptic kind of vibe where all these like engineers, artists, uh, scout masters all came together as a whole other few fractions and came together as if you were living in a new world on this big property in Tasmania somewhere and as everything was like zero waste, self-functioning for a week or two. And within that, this band came along and performed called Ginger and the Ghost. And I was like, who the fuck are these people? They're super artsy, cultured, magic touches to it. I was like, okay, cool. That was super cool, sort of. Then that disappeared. And then next was you popping up i think the next time i had met you was uh during it was only maybe last year was at a place that you run called the nest oh no i have bumped into a few times at the nest but it's a creative hub this big massive warehouse of different artists of all different flavors uh coming together and not only working from there but putting on really epic performances gigs events photo shoots music videos just everything goes on there here in sydney it's like the creative hub of sydney um but you were showcasing, I'm, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but this big like cyberpunk event that over maybe Hong Kong, was it that you were? Yes. And you were the creative director of that and COVID had hit. So you weren't actually able to be there, but it was this like really super epic thing where you did all of it from here in Australia, creative director had all these fucking hundreds of people that you're organizing and you became mother brain where you were like this big, like on the screen, uh, someone that's sort of controlling the system in some certain way. And I just thought that was like so in theme for COVID for, uh, for this like cyberpunk kind of uh, transmission that the whole event was meant to be that I was like, this is actually so perfectly in alignment I don't think it could have been cooler if you were there. It was actually cooler that you weren't there and that you were this mother brain from overseas. And I was again, I was like, what is this magic element that I feel going on here? I see it as art and extremely cultured and it's so out there, but I feel magic, but I still didn't really know you yet. And then, and then just, uh, I had gone to meet up with a friend at the nest who was having a meeting with you. So I was a sort of like on the side eavesdropping and you're like, oh, I have this, uh, ritualistic theatre experience that I'm doing throughout the warehouse, multiple rooms, you two are talking. And then just one of the roles was like, you're like, oh, I would just love if someone was like out the front naked as a human consent form. And then like when you had finished talking about all the other stuff, I was like, hey, by the way, I'll be that naked human consent form. <laughs> and then, yeah, I got to be a part of this real really epic ritualistic uh immersive experience of releasing emotion and weaving magic and i was like holy fuck like this is something i've always wanted to do is to have this like high level blend of arts and ritual together that is able to have people participate whether they uh, fully understand ritual and magic or not, but they're just in this thing and come out going, fuck, I feel like something's changed in me. 
So I, 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 yeah, I was blown away. I was so grateful to be a part of it. And I just think, yeah, again, you're a super epic human, just like the others in your own way. And I would love for you to introduce yourself offerings because I know you do so much more in the world, but that was my, <laughs> my connection to you. And that's how I see you. That's, that's yeah, where you painted yourself into my life. That's it for me. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Cut. <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, that's so epic and just so nice to hear um, everyone's stories as well but, and how you connect all together. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I feel like um, I'm, I feel like a bit of an alien in all of the worlds that I um, naturally fall into and um, you know, I, I, I'm always kind of like on this, in the design and tech world, and I'm always in this kind of forecasting and experiential design. I'm in this, um, forecasting space, I guess, future forecasting and, um, whether that looks like an experience or play, um, play design, um, it always has, um, it always has a really deeply researched and ritualistic um, grounding to it. And um, through all of my, I guess, my spiritual practices um, that are my sacred practices that, um, of self, and um, I've been able to infuse and weave, um, yeah, transmissions into uh, these, you know, experiences um in different settings all around the world and it's just been such a blessing um to be able to have that light bulb moment a few years ago and realize that um everyone wants to go deeper at this point of evolution I think and um everyone is ready to I feel like there's so many people ready for for more and more connection especially in the western world and I just see my my purpose work being um you know affecting um and and of and more so um engaging socially engaging art and um letting people come into those um spaces and really um having their own self-leadership in those spaces and and really um really coming out the other end feeling like they chose and they had decisions and um, they were a part of something bigger than themselves. Yeah. And the, yes. the culture thing for me is the, the biggest part of my work. I think is like I, all, all I ever want to do is create co culture and community. Um, mm. Yeah. Through the lens of ritual, I guess. So, yeah. Fuck yes. Thank you. <laughs> offerings. And, and something that I hear from all of you is that through art and magic and mysticism and embodiment practices all of you get to make impacts worldwide that you've connected with people all across the world through this which is is such a rare thing that people don't really get to experience like working for instance like with Janine I remember just conceptualizing with ISTA, like the International School of Temple Arts, meaning, oh, fuck, this woman and all the other practitioners or some of the other practitioners get to travel the world teaching magic. Uh, just that to me is just unfathomable and something that, like, as a child is something I would have wanted. Like, I want to travel the world and just teach magic. It, it, that is like the dream job of a child i believe and and each of you with arts and creativity that is a something still i'm working on you know that i want to be able to achieve is traveling the world and, and teaching to different people i might have an impact on social media to an extent but i haven't traveled the world i haven't even left australia so to know that each of you get to move around and, and weave in different ways i i'm i'm curious to know at first where it begins to be able to have a worldwide impact where it starts and 
Janine, I would love for you to to give a share on where your connection to magic and embodiment and shamanism began, where it led you to be able to be a part of ISTA and a part of a practice that takes you across the world. Mm. Yeah, well, it's interesting because it happened really very organically. Like there was not really, I didn't really have a vision of teaching magic around the world. <laughs> it's more, it, it, it's more it, I mean, as, as a child, I'd wanted to be a fairy, but. <laughs> Look, I would say you've achieved. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's more it's more that particular path came for me than anything. Um, and then I kind of, I guess, as it started to unfold some of the pieces that was particularly coming through me but around the feminine mysteries and, and, um, and particularly working with ritual with the menstrual blood, which wasn't that common um, back when that started to originate or, or I started to, t- to more move into that, particularly in mixed spaces and with... Um, yeah, starting to really demystify some of those things, but also mm. create and show the magic that can come from working in, in those areas. And then I actually went to a, um, it was a sex magic evening I went to. And at that point I just went, you know what, I really want to be co-creating with other people and, and creating spaces together somehow. And, and then the very next day I was invited to come and teach for Easter. And it was like, wow, wow okay. I didn't ever really ex- expect that to be outside Australia, but, um, mm. but yeah. So, so it came into Easter in the reasonably early days at that point when it was kind of still um, forming, I guess. Mm. And, and then part of the creation of it and, uh, weaving the feminine pieces that I had through that and 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 then it's um, kind of exploding into the world now relatively. Epic. How many years ago did ISTA begin? Oof. I've been with it with ISTA for about 11 years and I think maybe one or two years before that. Wow. Maybe only and one it's... year actually, yeah. So around between 11 and 13 years ago is sort of when that began for you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's look, you, you have a, you have a few stripes in in this area, I would say it sounds like, <laughs> and, and it sounds like the piece that really brought you in was like the transmission of the feminine. Yeah. It feels like, cause yeah, when I think when I first came in, it was the feminine was there, but there was, it was still more weighted, I guess, to more masculine expression and, mm. um, so bringing in the feminine pieces and also, you know, part of the depolarization to between masculine and feminine wars and all that kind of thing, like to mm. be starting to break that down. So we can start to experience those things um, with each other, in each other, and it's starting to integrate them. Mm. Yes. There's more of a marrying of, of feminine and masculine, allowing it to be a duality rather than polarizing one another. Yeah, and again, and, and you know, the languaging is starting to become a little, um, can become a little charged now with um, some of the other conversations that are happening. But at 11 years ago, it was pretty cutting edge to start going into those um, areas actually, and and to be recognizing, oh, even though whatever body I'm in, there's other. Mm expressions of me in that body and I can mm. connect to those and I can integrate those um mm. so yeah mm. can I ask a question what? yeah go uh, Janine <laughs> so from from um wanting to be a fairy uh where and how did you find yourself accumulating um the wisdom and the transmission that you now carry around um everything that you teach now Mm, I guess it was a it it was a journey of different things like I was in a lot of I went into a lot of spaces worked with a lot of teachers and um went into a lot of group work and and so there was that part of things but then really when the deeper work started to come in it was more it was more coming more coming through me through me 
rather mm. than it was more like I got to a point that I was able to get myself out of the way that um, that it would start to come through. And, yeah. and I would say that's where the deeper teachers, and particularly when I started really connecting with land and and that the portal that opens through matter and through land, um, I feel like that that started to deepen that um mm. Yeah, I getting myself that. out of the way to allow mm. something to mm. reveal. Yeah. Hugely. Epic. Does does your before we move on, does your inner child feel accomplished as a fairy? <laughs> we, we know I only really actually made that connection recently. Someone, <laughs> just someone on social media put some question up about, you know, what did you want to be when you grow up and have you realized that? And I thought, oh, I don't even know what I wanted to be when I grow up. And they went, oh, I know what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a fairy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> tick, tick, nice. tick, tick. I love that. Mm. So, so. I would love to, for you to maybe give us a bit of a journey into magic and ritual and where that came into your life and how that eventuated into allowing you to create an impact worldwide with your connection to this source. Um, Yeah, man, look, I I was just listening to Janine just now and thinking how much I resonate with... um, how she discovered her magic. Um, There's, I've always felt uh, something beyond what I tangibly understood and was taught by the world about how everything worked. Um, Moving inside of me, um, spirit always just wanting to burst out of me. And I was eventually, introduced to people that helped me understand that I have a transmission and messages and magic to, to, to share with the world. Um, and it's, it's, it's still in its blossoming phase within me. Um, as, as, as Janine said, it is now that I'm starting to move myself out of the way and the perceptions that I had around what it is and what it's supposed to look like and what it is um, to be uh, this vessel that that lets all of this come through him, um, that I've started to experience um, spirit, ancestors, um, and magic move through me in in big ways. Mm. Um, so yeah, like I said, my name is Nyani. So Nyani so in Kosa means truth. And um, so, like, I don't know if it, how intentional it was with my father's family because they named me, but in in Kosa culture, you live and you become what your name is. And so I, I find myself very passionate about expressing what my perception of truth is. Um, and with that, uh, my second name being Zagelelo, Blessing, um, I've, I've always had a curiosity to be connected to, to my um, culture and to rituals that happen at home. Um, my, not even my family or even closer people, but um, generally in South Africa amongst people of color, um, ritual and culture is, is something that is very potent here in the land um, and amongst the people. Um, it was no different for, for my family. Something that is not so common is people being called into spiritual transmission and spirit work and, and, and transmitting um, those kinds of energies, um, which was uh, something that I had and something that I questioned a lot because not many people around me were very forthcoming about that kind of journey. Um, It's something that is respected a lot and in many ways feared around people here. Um, And so when it it is something that I felt, I I spent a lot of time questioning it before I eventually stepped into it, which, which I guess 
is the reason why I took so long to move myself out of the way to allow whatever is moving in me to, to come through. So um, I often have these uh, experiences where um, the spirit would, would come through me, I'd roar, I'd speak in different voices and I'd say things that um, are potent to whatever moment is happening and, and somewhat weird and strange to me. Um, and, and the more I surrendered to it, the more potent the messages became. And the more I surrendered to it and the more I opened myself up to it, the more I was guided and drawn to people that could help me hone in on what my transmission is and what my messages is and how to further um, open myself up to being this uh, vessel. Um, and in, in, in African, South African culture that normally takes the shape of what is called a Sangoma, which is um, in Western terms can be called a spiritual healer. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, spiritual healer probably surmise it. But um, yeah, Sangomas have various callings and various gifts, um, but generally they are bridges between what spirit and ancestors are communicating to the people of the land. Um, and I found that is, that is a lot, uh, pretty much the foundation of, of my transmission. And then with that comes various gifts that are specific to me. Um, and that's been my journey ever since. And uh, as I grew up, I, I was always, um, an artist and wanting to be a person that lets stories come through him and tell stories. And as I find the stability between this world of being this uh, vessel of spirit and ancestry um, and having understood and allowed myself to be an artist, it is now a journey for me of how do these two worlds come together Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's the current discovery space that I'm at right now, and um, mm -hmm. it's beautiful and big and scary and uh, big unfolding. Mm. Yeah, I'm so curious about that part. You know, this artist and mystic. Uh, giving these transmissions in both spaces, especially now in your career being on such a mainstream platform, still holding that anchor of like, I'm a mystic, I'm here to do healing work. Mm. And, and which we'll get to later. I'm, I'm curious to see how this is perceived through these different outlets of press that you're interacting with and if if and how that comes up or if it's detrimental to the career in yeah. any way but i would no, uh, for, oh, sorry go. For, for me um i've come to understand and this is something that i have heard bits and, and drips of but generally what has landed in me is my ancestors uh help me hold this gift of being an artist and a storyteller um, and as I look back on um, my ancestors my uncles that had passed away and uh, people that have lived before them they were storytellers they were speakers they were magicians and um, I understand that the gift of being an artist is not separated from my ancestors. In fact, it's very much hand in hand. It's just a, a journey for me to understand how it is hand in hand for me specifically. Mm. Um, and the more I allow both of that, both of these things to, to come together, the bigger each one becomes and the stronger they become. Um, yes. And, yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. So it's uh, very much in the spirit of your names of trust. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I also understand that ancestors are not separated from what I um, associate to God and knowing that God gave me these gifts and mm. God is, is the, the grand father of spirit 
and um, and God wouldn't give me a gift to therefore make me choose between that gift and being connected to spirit. Mm. Yes. Church to that, church to that. <laughs> Offerings. I'm curious to hear, especially on your journey as, as I come in in different areas of, of hearing where this mystic transmission, this channeling of ritual into your art came in and, and especially did art come first? Did ritual and spirituality come first or did they come at the same time? And, and how that eventually led you to being able to perform and connect with people across the world? Well, I, I was listening to um, both Janine and Inessa and, and I feel like I was kind of taking my time back to when I was young and um, like my background is, um, you know, I come from the suburbs in Sydney, grew up BMXing, <laughs> BMX bikes, <laughs> you know, I was a real suburb kid and then um, we moved to the Gold Coast so um, that's a really beautiful surf break um, and I started my passion and my journey with surfing with a group of women, with a group of girls and um, there was a time when no one, there was not many women in the, in the ocean surfing. And um, we just had this really big, I guess that's where my spirituality started, was that really deep communing with the ocean and the water. And I had come, coming forward these years, I, I think it was two years ago, actually just when the pandemic started, just before then I had this huge party at my house with a lot of friends for my, my birthday and um, the sun was coming up and we were talking about embodiment and move, where my movement um, came because I'm not a, a formal dancer um, and all of my movement work comes through working with my ancestors and um, you know, complete embodiment practices. And so what I realized was there was this huge connection between surfing and um, dancing and embodiment because in the ocean, when you're surfing 10 foot waves and you get pressed down to the bottom of the ocean by a wave, there's a point in that where you have to surrender and there's a space in, in that time where you really don't know how long you can hold your breath for and there's a lot of things that happen in the ocean that are quite magical. Um, and the movement of ocean and the way that um, the tides and, and the way that water moves when you're in the ocean is actually the way I move when I, when I move my body. So I feel like my language, my embodiment language, which was a mind blowing moment for me was when I realized that my, my movement language is a transmission from the language of water and the way that water moves is the way that I move. And it's come through being so connected with water that I have this um, particular way of transmitting um, just transmitting <laughs> and it's really hard to describe but I hope that comes across in the right way but it, I have this really deep connection with the water um, and obviously all of the elements and um, I guess just I, I remember being um, just mum would call out for me when I was little and I'd just be upside down in the garden looking up at the flowers probably wanting to be a fairy too I'd say um you know and so um I just feel like I was I was just constantly in love with nature and um constantly um in awe and curious and playful in nature and I really believe that through that deep um you know blessed connection with um honoring nature that I've um it's sprouted out from there where um, that's been my honouring nature is my practice with 
as a musician and a producer and um, an activist um, and, you know, um, that goes into play and ritual and all these different spaces. Um, and so, yeah, it really comes from, from, from Mother Nature, I think definitely is, is um, where it all began for me spiritually in any sacred space. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then it was interesting, like, it, it was only, um, I feel like, I feel like the, that I've always had that feeling of, um, of something else coming through me and that was always coming through me as ideas. Like I just, I never had, a, I always wondered why people had these like, oh, I can't think of this, you know, I, I can't imagine that or I haven't got an idea for that or I, I don't know, like, I feel like um, I've always had these like ideas kind of purging out of my body <laughs> mm. and um, they're kind of, um, they're just, like a fountain it's it's quite wild and um it's it's actually recently in the last sort of five or so years that I really um started to engage with um sacred arts practices um hermetic traditions indigenous first nations um found out about my lineage of um indigenality and um through all of these um practices sacred practices um I was able to find a structure and a container for um what was happening with me through my life Mm. so it really um ritual and the the daily practice of ritual was so um intuitive for me um and learning about all the correspondences, you know, throughout astrology, you know, um, numerology, everything, tarot, all of the, all of the beautiful, um, you know, tools that we have to tap into, um, they, they create structure for me and they create kind of like a container for the information so that, um, yeah, I can, I can use it um and 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 let it out into the world in a really um beautiful way and it's just um it's just been an incredible journey really and um there's so much to there's so much to learn um in in the space of sacred ritual and um it's a really it's a really curious place for me at this point, um, like right now in the here and now is, is that I'm looking at these ways of um, working with um, a novice approach. Novice is really important to me um, in my practices to, to keep that childlike um, curiosity. Mm. And, and that's actually my, my purpose work is to, um, is to look at ways to open people up to curiosity and play and um, hopefully open a space of vulnerability in a safe container so that they can also explore that space um, of possibility. Um, And I just feel like there's, you know, that that's, um, that's what I, um, that's what I hope to create is, um, my my life experiences over here, my um, my technical you know ritual um, skills and tools and structure, and then when they come together, you know I look for that space in between and um, and that expansive pool of consciousness um, that just holds so much possibility, and that's really mm. exciting for me. You know, that sounds like it's a tying theme of everyone is that the inner child has not has not been squashed down, that, that there's been a channel available to allow the creativity of, of whatever the magic of the land is, of whatever channels, transmissions that want to come through have either just 
fucking made itself do that. Like, I don't fucking care. I'm coming through and you're going to have to figure it out as I'm transmitting or that you've made, everyone's made space. I think as you get older and you start to get a grip of, of this abundance of knowledge and, and things that want to come out from us, you, it sounds like you've all created more and more space to allow it. And, and it sounds like that really is just the inner child transmitting the, or just your soul, your source, whatever you want to call this, this, yeah, transmission that each of you seem to have of, of, magic and creativity yeah and yeah i would love to go back to you nyani so i know everyone sort of has their different backgrounds here but i know from more so from having conversations with yana that and and maybe this isn't how i've interpreted it but it sounds like in your family there has been a certain level of culture and tradition that does have a level of magic woven into it and i'm I'm curious to hear if if i am interpreting that right one and two is how that was seeded down to you and when you started to realize that there is a lineage that you're going to carry on especially as someone that is to be a father um, how are you going to carry on this to the next part of the lineage, this tradition that comes from family? Mm. Um, well, before, before we jumped on here, I was, I was sitting with myself and asked myself, what's culture, what's ritual? And um, the answer for, for that is ritual is practice, mm. practice that, ignites and activates the essence of who we are it Mm. activates our magic it activates our power um and and connects us to our purpose um and that's to the core um what ritual has been used as in my in my in my cultural background in my family amongst my people um ritual also is also used to heal sometimes because of a lack of practicing a certain ritual in one's life can can invite and leave openings and gaps in one's life for for illness to come through and when you reignite that ritual and practice that ritual again um you revitalize your essence and bring life and your life force back to to its potency and 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 your vibrancy in your life comes back and your health comes back um that's that's pretty much how it was taught to me and passed down to me with not as many words because in my culture you watch and that's how you learn you experience you take part you do um and you're shown things and that's how you learn um and that's how things are passed down to you i think i'm probably one of the first if not the first um of my family who's actually um, taking the learning quite practically and asking my uncle, okay, cool, what does that do? And when you're serving certain parts of meat um, after a ritual slaughtering to a certain individual um, group of people, what does that mean? And why Mm. do we do that? And which Mm. certain parts do we not serve to certain people? And which ones do we serve to certain people? Okay, cool. And when we're slaughtering, what do we use? And how do we slaughter? Okay, cool. With a goat, it's different. To a lamb, it's different. Ah, and a cow, it's different. Like I'm taking it to that level of just like wanting to understand how it is because um, I guess... Living in in modern suburban Joburg, South Africa, I I I understand it can easily be lost. And so when I'm when I go home to the ritual rural lands, um, I take up every opportunity to soak it all up and learn. Because not too long 
in the future, um, my uncle's not going to be there anymore and I'm going to be the one carrying the mantle for mm. this practice being kept alive because my life, my essence, my health and, and my family's health depends on, on it being done um, I don't want to say perfectly, but done in a way that serves its purpose. Um, mm. And so that's how I approach it. And I found that the more that I sought to understand myself and my ritual and my culture, the more I came to understand um, what I'm here to do as a transmitter of spiritual magic and um, connecting myself and other people to ancestry and bringing health um, around the messages that are coming through and helping people um, get clarity on what's being transmitted and communicated to them from the ancestral field. Um, and, and that is something that is slowly revealing and showing itself to me about how it's going to look like as a father, as a man of the household. Um, and it's not something that I am trying to, there's some things that like, I guess I can take for, um, uh, uh, forward steps and, and be forthcoming around um, putting into place. Uh, but there are other things like how to play my role that I surrender myself to and go, okay, cool spirit ancestors, you show me how you want me to play the roles. Um, but I do understand that in me understanding and open myself up to it, um, I will be able to, to serve a greater role, which is beyond me and to my family and to my children and to my nephews that are going to be below me and, and the rest of the family around me. And, mm. and most of the time, like understanding how ritual and, um, and culture is held in my culture and around my people, a lot of the responsibility falls on the men. Mm. Um, the women support and they give their guidance, um, but it is, it is the man that um, penetrates or acts upon whatever it is that needs to be done. Mm. Wow. I'm so happy I asked that. And just that <laughs> beauty, that <was> juicy. <laughs> so fucking juicy. And just the beauty of knowing <laughs> Yay, this <thank> you. <laughs> is a lineage that you find important to continue on. And, and that, like you're saying, that your uncle's not going to be around forever. And that next you're going to be the keeper of tradition. And that that's going to be someone, like you're going to have people asking you these questions. And that's just a a deep mourning that I have within myself that I didn't have that passed down to me and I didn't have that person to look up to. And I believe, you know, this is conversations I've had before on the podcast of, I remember hearing a story like this at one point on, on the very first podcast. And then I got asked the same question and I was like, I'm just white. I'm, just this and just that and like that word just is like where I'm retracting any of my lineage any of my ancestry and my responsibility to go seek it out yeah maybe my uncle isn't the person I can go get it from but there's so much available these days especially with the internet especially with these DNA tests if you want to do it in a more like logistical way but also there's this the ability to connect to land like you know we've all mentioned that we can find these traditions find these rituals deeply embedded in our DNA and in our cells that yeah I've luckily had the ability to do both in a matter of mm. One, I have people like you in my life that, uh, you know, there's so many times where I just send you a voice message. Hey, what does this mean? What? Tell me a bit about this, about yourself. Can you share some words? Just, just speak to me in your language so I can just get a bit of a transmission of, of just something that's different, but also is awakening something within me that makes me want to go back and learn more. And then I have the internet that I can go learn things about where I'm from but then, yeah, that ability to tap in. And I guess 
Like I, I'm curious again for someone like yourself, Janine, that is so in touch with yourself that has this connection to your own practice and that you've become quite masterful in what you teach and how this you created either your own lineage starting from now or you've gone back and found something that maybe had been lost and and to my understanding you have some kind of christian or catholic background and and where that intersects into your life now Yeah. So kind of a big question. So yeah, mm. I've got, I have got a Catholic background. Um, mm. But I wouldn't say that necessarily open that more that more created contraction and um, conditioning that had to be moved through rather than mm. necessarily gave me that much. Although in it's part of unraveling that. I feel like a lot of this, a lot of it's been penet- almost like penetrating back through to find the thread of energy or truth that's coming through that particular thing. Mm. And so I would say pretty much with all religions, there's, there's some truth there, although there is some magic there. Um, get past the rules and the contractions and the, and, and the things that have been imposed on a lot of it. So I think part of it was a rejection and then a piercing back through and, and finding some thread. And I think that the mysticism thread really came through that one. Mm. And then, yeah, family wise, um, yeah, culturally not, not much um, to, other than, you know, more conditioned white culture Mm -hmm. so again a piercing through and uh to to i guess some of the more celtic um threads because which is if i track my lineage back it's it's very celtic Mm -hmm. but really in some ways it almost feels like it was even getting behind or beyond that as well because and, and I, I guess that's the land piece for me. Because I feel like mm. as I've gone deeper into matter and deeper into the mysteries of matter and and moving through the different layers of the land, the elements are shamanic and really connecting to this, I guess, source energy, ecstatic energy that's held in matter, which is in, in my view is the same as what's held in the heights, um, but it's it, 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 it's a more embodied way that can be felt in the cells. I feel like that is really what all cultures are drawing from as it comes through their different flavors of tradition. Mm -hmm. So in some ways it it felt like it was going through all of that to to that, to whatever's underneath and, and, and I guess the source of what's coming through it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I guess it's been this ability to penetrate through and, and find the thread of energy that's, that's that's in many in many places but Mm. um yeah kind of shaking through rigidity or conditioning or distortions to access that that thread of um a a more more pure current Mm. Mm. as someone that like you're saying that you're creating and and learning and activating through land and in the small windows of conversation that we've had outside of you teaching me is that like, like in the facilitator role is, you know, you've shared a few stories of different lands that you've got to experience across the world and also certain like very sacred spaces where there is quite historical stories that we are all aware of due to different mythology different religion uh how you've one found is there differences in these lands in its very source that you're connecting to and maybe the differences between being here in australia and you're on the red earth and it may be some places if you've been to any celtic areas that are of your own lineage, what the resonance difference is, if there is any that are activating in you in those spaces? Mm, Beautiful question. Yeah. Mm. Um, It's almost like I feel like each, 
each land has its has its own particular like in my language would be frequency it's got its own mm -hmm. frequency and um and actually i don't know if there's so much there's more resonance with different lands but it's more i don't know put it into a keyboard it's like oh this is this note and 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 this is this note let's get mm -hmm. to experience those different flavors um but i do know i had a particular i guess as far as strong resonance was um when i went to sedona and the red bear the red mm -hmm. desert and then at that stage, I hadn't actually been to Uluru in Australia. So that led me then to go to Uluru and that red, there's something about the red and the, <clears throat> the remoteness of the desert and also the aliveness of um, that particular quality of the red ochre and the, the iron or something. There's something there. So when, then, when this land came into my that I'm that I'm um, living on now came into my life it was a very clear yes because it had it has those qualities of the red so that's that's a strong resonance mm. um, but it's almost like I've just actually come back from a five-week land pilgrimage um, managed to navigate through some state borders and I've uh, been out through outback Queensland and and into non -ter Northern Territory up to Kakadu and Arnhem Land was particularly where I was really feeling to go and sleeping on the land each night just very simply in a tent like just so on the land and for such a like a longer period of time like a five-week kind of pilgrimage it was just really feeling almost like my body becoming more and more one with the land and then these kind of patches of frequency of different places that I've been making up part of my body or something so mm. there's some definite connection for me mm. around the land and how it it's almost like it becomes part of me when I've been to that land and sat with it and vibrated with it and and felt that frequency and and, and integrate that into my body it, it's like a, that that land then becomes a part of my body or something mm. it sounded a little bit strange but it's like, yeah, yeah body I and land that. start to yeah merge yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, for me in my practice, when I am in ritual, especially when I'm facilitating ritual for others, you know, I do a call in of ancestors, but also what I do is I do a call in of land of those places where I've sat and I feel like, oh, I've become one. And, and now we hold each other in a certain container of energy and responsibility. And, and there's a, a, a friendship there now that I can call on you. And sometimes I get called by you to come to you, you know? And yeah, so I can resonate with that, like feeling like, oh, this body of water or this body of land has now become one with me to an extent, uh, for me is that, yeah, now I have this relationship and I can sort of tap into certain places. It's not just anywhere that I've just spent the night or whatever, but it's like, I've sat there and I've done ritual. I've laid on the earth. I've connected over and over. This is a place that I can call upon in my ritual to hold space and to make sure there's safety in, in what I'm doing and that, yeah, I'm connected to something. So yeah, I definitely resonate with that. Thank you for sharing. Missy, one I want to flip to because of all three of you, when I uh, look at you on either Instagram, Facebook, or in real life, that there's just this undeniable, like physical appearance and and way that you present yourself that is very unique to you, and that's you know a lot of done through material clothing. You know, I'm even like surprised right now, Janine, that I'm seeing so much red and, and not as much purple, but maybe so there's been some shifts in your, <laughs> in your, in your world. <laughs> <laughs> and Missy uh, offerings. I am curious to, to hear about activations that you may get, because to me, you're a fashion icon and, and like one of my favorite <laughs> moments with you is when you're like, uh, when we went into your big uh, like wardrobe of props and clothing and different uh, yeah bits and bobs of, of to create outfit. And, you know, you even have a little, some kind of pearl altar thing in the background that 
I, I just love that you also just in your work, there's, I, I, I see there's a lot of archetypes activated through your fashion and, and drawing from different cultures and remixing and, and yeah, allowing yourself to really embody through this rather than just connection to land or where you're at or source or energy that there's a physical uh, activation by putting on certain, yeah, clothes, material that I really admire. And I'm curious to hear about your relationship with fashion and, and designing these versions of yourself that you transmit from. Whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, firstly, I, I probably wouldn't even say that they're fashion. Um, I'm, I mean, I love, um, I mean, where I really draw from is um, culture. And um, I've never really been um, into trends as in, what's on trend, wear it, da, da, da. It's, it's, it's so weird. I mean, I've always been a little weirdo. <laughs> I've always been um, constantly wanting to um, express myself by, you know, layering on um, colour and, you know, things that make me feel physically and emotionally and mentally inspired and in a certain way um have a place and a space in um in the environments that i'm i'm in and um actually studying neuroscience at the moment neuropsych and um one of my parts is called the chameleon and i just found her <laughs> and i realized that she's kind of like um she is someone that um, can sort of shape shift um, to to suit a certain environment, and it's almost like this um, this layer of protection over me, and um, or a layer of um, story. So I would really, yeah, I guess jamming and just talking it out, free 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 flow. Um, it's both things. It's a it's a protection layer for me. Um, it's an it's a it's a radical form of self expression, um, and um, it's a story. It's my story, and um, I realized through the channels that I um, authentically fall into, like music, arts, you know, um, experience, ritual, that they all have. Um, they all sort of started to evolve into these um, characters. Mm. Um, and I realised that the cost costume and wearable um, accoutrements and, and, and materials really um, helped me with my transmission and helped me tell the story um, mm. of the transmission. So... Um, they're a storytelling tool and um you know sometimes people are like hey can you style me or can you style me and I'm kind of like no like <laughs> I'm not a stylist <laughs> like I, yeah. I this is this is my this is my world and my being and my um the way that I um I want to tell my story it's not for um the purpose of looking beautiful or cool or um what you know whatever um yeah yep. I, I authentically tell a story from yeah from 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 what I um you know cloak myself in and yeah it's been interesting um like for example the Hong Kong um I was uh, doing show direction through um throughout Hong Kong with those 200 um cyberpunk um artists that have kind of created that subculture in Hong Kong. Um, they've worked on, um, you know, Calvin Soy from Ghost in a Shell. He did all the Akira set design and um, all the fashion designers from Hong Kong were um, dressing all of the characters in this concept. And 
the main story was was my story that came through, which was a transmission. Um, and the story was um, a prophecy um, done through costume and design and technology, um, 3D animation, all of the things coming together to tell this really kind of um, a really deeply sacred story and, uh, and have it go to um, go out and into the world through 16,000 people that got to come through um, and, and feed through this story. And the, the story was called the, uh, the Prophecy of the Golden Scene. And through, you know, um, becoming this kind of mother brain um, uh, archetype for sure, um she was she she presented this story in such a way that um you know um it was disarming and um disarmed with the costume it just the story came through because um I was disarming and allowing people to kind of relax and it was fun and playful and wild and weird and it was um a really I realize that that's kind of my formula um, in the art space where I can disarm mm -hmm. um, and disrupt through these fantastical psychedelic sci-fi, um, you know, um, visuals and, and really um, tell the essence of um, story and, and my story and my, my transmissions through that space. So, yeah, they're definitely a tool, um, a disarming tool so that people can kind of feel comfortable and um, and happy and joyful and mm -hmm. and then really um, get that story. And I guess um, the thing that I always wonder is, are people really getting the story? Are they listening to the story? Is it coming through? Because the prophecy was about if we don't, look after and love and nurture and cherish planet A, that there, there is no planet B and um, the way that we're gonna get through this time is through grassroots connection and communication and our communities. And that, that was told through this fantastical sci-fi story, but um, I was like, did it get through? Um, mm. And people contact me um, and and they get it and it comes through and that's been really just wild and humbling and so cool to, to see mm. that, um, to, to know that I've, you know, I've got all of this um, in me and that I'm able to use these contemporary art mediums um, and multidisciplinary practices to kind of, um yeah to 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 use as a tool to to let it come through so yeah Perfect. <laughs> yeah I'll that's something <laughs> that's very good no, so... may, may, may i share something that i i just had a baby transmission of um, yes. While you were talking and you were speaking back to or you speaking to how people would come to you and, and ask you to style them um, and I, I understand and resonate with you not being able to style them like you because you are transmitting your story and your connection to spirit and what's coming through you about you. Um, I had a vision of you um, being able to connect to their story and their spirituality mm -hmm. and their ancestry and styling them according to what you read and 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 receive from them mm. just throwing that out there maybe that's so <laughs> much but yes. you know what? that's so interesting actually it's you've just blown my mind because i've been working on something for the past years actually since the pandemic started i had a crazy download and it and i've been drawing out this uh, project for the last year like it's so big and the whole idea is to create um, a space so that um, so that people can tell their authentic story 
through this new space and it's all about how I can do that exactly what you said mm -hmm. and it's called Unite Play Perform so I'm just going to put it out there <laughs> yes um, and that's just so thank you so much for that it just I like really reaffirmed yeah, I even heard like <laughs> the words dress you in your story coming through just now. Mm. Wow, thank you. <laughs> I, am, I am fully <laughs> here to be the guinea pig of, of dress so you can dress <laughs> my story anytime. You just give me a message and I'll cool. shoot over to the nest at any point. <laughs> Well, obviously, you got to dress me first. You're <laughs> 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm curious, um, Yanni. So, what your your link is sort of what I touched on at the very start of how you are manifesting these epic roles, and 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 for instance, how you just right now you're like, oh, this is coming through, and I know you're very determined, you're very focused on where you want to be and what you want to do, and 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 how you create your career and and how that plays in like I think a lot of people are very interested in especially in the artist world manifesting is a big word that's a, a buzzword right now and and my perception of and, and people that are around me where I've seen that most clearly actualizing is with you so I'm curious to hear how much that does play in like are you really going i want to manifest this in my life and this is what i'm creating and and if yes what is the tools how are you actually creating that in your life what is your manifestation circuit um spirit and ancestors um I have this understanding that spirit is constantly moving around us all. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on how uh, fluent a channel is, it will be how, how potent the frequency and the message will come through. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, generally when I connect in a container or amongst a group of people, um, and especially more more recently, more presently, when I um, distinctly say I'm I'm present with Janine offerings and Paisley, and I I am present and I honor and I acknowledge their ancestors. Sometimes, depending on what's happening in in their world and their frequency and their channel, sometimes um, a spirit would find it um, easier to communicate a specific message through me, because mm -hmm. of however open my channel is. And and it 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 it, it used to happen involuntarily, um, growing up um, and earlier on, and and I would get like bombarded with like messages that are just coming out of nowhere. And it's like like sitting amongst a group of people and I look at somebody and I'll just like feel something. I'll start crying and I'll be like, you need to go home and talk to your grandmother. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, or, so basically um, it's, it's al almost the same thing when it comes to storytelling and being an artist for me, it's like, okay, cool. I get to a certain space, um, an artistic, um, creation space and I'm like spirit move through me and communicate through me what you wish to to move in this space and and one of the more um memorable ones for me that you you'll be able to relate to Reese is um um when we're shooting Black as King um yes. we arrived at this spot and we were behind schedule so we didn't have a lot of time to to put a lot of foundations and direction into 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 you know into play um but the director kind of said to me okay look right now you're connecting to your dad and you haven't connected to your dad in in, in some time and you're seeing him in in almost like a vision like state um and i sat with that and i was like I have no idea how to approach this. And then in that moment, I was like, okay, cool. Spirit, tell me and show me how you want this to be. Mm. And that moment 
was 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 beyond me it was bigger than what i as an artist was um te- technically applying mm-hmm. um and and when i walked away from it i remember thinking hmm, i wonder if it is um or was what it is that that i i i wished for it to be or like it would it would convey what was needed and if you watch black is king it it is um at the end of um is it is, i don't know which song of, of beyonce's but basically the the cut has drifted down this river and i look like i just um stepped out of that um riverbed and saw my dad in my grown form and even for me watching it it's it's one of the more um moving segments of of that of that part of the story and and watching it has been a reminder for me to go yes when you ask spirit to 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 step in and 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 move and convey what needs to be conveyed it will be conveyed and it spirit will move and it's no different. Like I don't, I don't stray away from learning the technicalities of what it is that I'm doing, as an artist as well as a holistic uh, a healer practitioner of um, healing emotions and connecting to spirit. There are things that I take my body through from a physical technical front, um, but I I also understand how important. Um, opening your channel up to spirit to be able to 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 do whatever needs to be done in certain moments Mm. wow yeah i find that so important as as someone like i would love to do acting but i don't know how good i would do at the actual like reading any kind of like script i'm not good at reading altogether but i would Mm -hmm. love to be able to be like more of a improv actor but actually doing it from a place of spirit like listening and and transmitting so to hear that you had that moment of like just uh, just feeling in okay spirit like let me transmit this and then watching back that's the most powerful moment for you i i yeah that's something really inspiring Mm -hmm. for me and you know by doing that work and and constantly moving through spirit and being dedicated to ritual. Uh, I'm curious to hear like wins, you know, in life, I love to give gratitude and like offerings and thank yous for the times that I am protected, the times I do achieve bigger features in my life, but, you know, currently not to play comparisons, but, you know, for something that I see with you is, you know, you've just, done a movie with Disney who is like one of the biggest biggest franchises in the world with Beyonce Mm. who's one of the biggest pop stars in the world and you're on Mm. billboards across LA in America with this and I love like the significance of seeing it when we're talking about spirit right now you're very much in like this pose like this levitating on this big billboard I'm curious to hear like (laughs) get that epic fucking payoff of the work how that again like does that make you just want to dive deeper into like gratitude and practice and go fuck i can ramp this up even more because it's it's that like i've just been fucking gifted this is how i'm imagining i want to hear from your side what it's like when you see this actually manifest in the world of going from dream to to realized yeah man um What in the past, especially when things like this for me ha- happened, is your your mind wants to go, okay, cool. Now what must I do? And as I've as I grew up, I started to learn to go. Even so, you call spirit in God, the infinite light to come through and and manifest and create something with you and through you and it it gets created and what comes of that is is something that i've learned recently to go okay cool spirit now that we're receiving this also show me how to hold it and Mm. also show me how to take it to the next place 
and and therefore I kind of drop the egoic um, pressure that I place on myself on how and what to do next and surrender to I got the gift from spirit and spirit I'm asking you and inviting you to 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 be in in me and in my hands as I hold this gift and help me present it and place it where you want me to place it and use it in ways that you want me to use it and and also then guide me therefore where where next and how next to to move for whatever else you want me to use me for um, and that that gives me a freedom and a surrender and and um, bliss to exist in, in more of a bliss rather than 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 a pressure and a fear which visits me but I remember to connect to and allow in order for me to 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 make room for what what what's the next move mm. that's so humbling for me to hear there's there's times where i can get a bit triggered especially around more religion areas where people lose a bit of their autonomy and 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 surrender it to god but you know hearing something like you're saying of like spirit like thank you how can i be a channel to the next is like there is this correlation of like so, yeah surrendering the ego the self the your own needs and desires of of what i should have next and surrendering to that extent where i'm sure you know that is what the ego and desires want is to have a, a role that big but you allowed it to come from some source and spirit rather than mm. yeah i need i i i and i and, apply the same thing also to sorry to disturb you I, I apply the same thing when, with with money too. Like you just got paid, you got you got your salary in front of you, and you're like, "What should I buy?" And you're like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait." <laughs> <laughs> show me, show me how and where and how to plant the seed and and place it where. And and I find that I I've been able to be a bit more resourceful, a bit wiser, a bit more strategic with mine and money um as i as i as i go into that prayer and that philosophy Mm, i love that and yeah something i guess janine last things i remember one of our last conversations we had at uh maybe kylie's birth kylie and tyron's birthday was talking about these initiations from spirit and from god and from whatever we're traveling with in life is I know what you were journeying last time I saw you was a lot of the crone energy and going through um, the word escapes me right now. Um, Metaphors. Metaphors. Yes. And, and where you are with that and, and also that listening to go, Oh, there's, there's a a spirit coming through. And I know I was blown away when you were sharing because I was like, oh my God, I've never heard anyone talk about menopause in this way. Usually it is this like, my life is over, this, that. It's like quite a like, there's no good that can come from this. And just you were just sharing this abundance of knowledge and and like transformation and, and yeah, this just source energy that there, there was parts where I was like, I feel this coming into me, but here I'm not, I, some of this, I can't even understand because it's just, it's not where I'm at in life. I, I'm curious to hear about your journey and, and how you are listening into being initiated and getting the magic out of this archetype out of this uh, and this yeah, initiation of, of body. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, it is an interesting one because there's there's not so much out there about about menopause being an initiation. There's there is more and more coming to support the physicality of it now, and um, but mostly, um, you know, I mean, I'm in a couple of menopause groups and more mainstream groups, and typically the narrative is still that it's a 
a terrible experience to go through and life is over and you shrivel up and all these, you know, it's, mm. that seems to be a common narrative. So I just knew for me that wasn't it. For me, it's it's the third feminine initiation and it's um, it's, a, it's a powerful portal and to mm. approach it in that way and... Um, and my experience has been it's it's been like going into a cocoon and in some ways the world events have kind of supported that because at the moment I'm trapped in Australia and can't travel anywhere so mm. <laughs> so it's kind of supported this to be on my land and 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 in this cocoon I even built a little cave that I've been living in um, during this mm-hmm. period of time and and this feeling of being cooked actually and being being stripped back and what was what was interesting i have to say it has really humbled me this initiation i um i kind of i th- i felt like i was pretty current with my life going into it so i you know i thought oh, i don't know if it's going to be so much a dissolution you know because i've done a lot of shamanic death and um those kind of rituals so I, and i felt i was fairly current but yeah i learned no that's not the case this is definitely a dissolution experience and the stripping back of everything that's known and 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 in this disintegration and cooking and and actually chaos a lot of chaos energy and obviously the chaos energy is up on the planet as well but i'd say one of the biggest things that it's it's te- it's taught me going being in it is how to work with um the energy of chaos and the magic of chaos actually mm-hmm. and and how to to yeah to utilize and work with that energy and i've noticed that um now in different ritual spaces now i'm bringing chaos energy in to support the move, movement of energy in containers and so mm-hmm. it's, it's things like that it's teaching me um but it's it's definitely taking me into an emptiness place and uh and uh and I'm, I'm getting little peaks of what's on the other side yet but it's still not it's still not there i'm still very much in that cooking kind of process and it's stripping mm-hmm. back but but in it, I can feel like my energy has got, even my eros is very internal and I can feel it just all like cooking every cell. And it's almost like, the, it is very, I guess the cocoon's a good um, metaphor really, because it does feel like there's the body that went into the cocoon is being completely disintegrated and dissolved and, and then something's reforming that's going to emerge from this experience it's been taken but I don't know what that is and so it's very much in in, being in a liminal in between state of uh, I don't really know what this new is and but this one's not so relevant anymore and and just being in that in that place and surrendering to that place and surrendering to that cooking and so I can Mm. feel the potency of it in my cells and I can feel can feel the darkness of the energy um yeah, repatterning and as this crone starting to be woven and mm. I'm kind of curious what's going to, um, yeah, birth. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so am I. As, as, as just sharing to send, I was like, oh, please, please at least like ramble off what you think is going to be birthed out of here when you're like, and I just don't know what it is. Like, damn it, I'm, I'm impatient. <laughs> it's a, it is the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow and that's uh, i love that um uh, one of the really important parts that i heard there is it's the third feminine initiation and i yeah i love that language there for anyone that's listening to go yeah this isn't no there's no ending that doesn't have a beginning afterwards here you know it's it's not just the the death of all deaths it's yeah there's another initiation to move through into and i think that really does tie me into we're getting up to two hours now that i would love in that share there for people that want to continue to watch this uh metamorphosis happen of of janine and and the crone and and whatever you are also offering in the world where people can follow you keep up to date with you and any offerings that you have in the world right now that people uh, can come get your transmission either in real life over the internet whatever it is 
I, I guess the easiest place is either to follow me on Facebook or um, redearthtemple.com. I'm not so much into the socials and the, all that bit. So um, sometimes finding me is moving through the veils. <laughs> um, <laughs> but depending what, um, yeah, what you like, there's, there is some offerings coming up. But um, actually with not being able to travel, is, it's, it's interesting morphing. But I did create an ecstatic menopause um, online um, that can be accessed by anybody. So if, if there was some juice around that piece, it just came through um, going right into the shamanic initiation of that and, and different rituals um, as a week. It, it can be done as like a week long experience to really soak into some of the transmissions that have been coming through about that portal and to repattern what it is actually. Um, so that's definitely on offer. Um, mm, mm. And then also I'm involved in the temple training, hide in temple training, where we're really creating um, soul codes and templates to birth um, temples and communities that's on the other side of this chaos and disintegration the world's in. And that, that juices me. I want to be hanging with people that are wanting to be vibrating what's on the other side of this collective mm. death experience that we're going mm. through worldwide. Mm. So, um, yeah, Hayden Temple and, of course, this uh, International School of Temple Arts is another portal to find me. Yeah, I, um, I love that. And that's a big thing that I got out of going to ISTA is just – for me, one of my highest values is to have community that are like-minded and, and ISTA has such a beautiful community and for people to be dedicated to ritual and arts and magic, that's a, that's a big piece that comes out of that. And depending on what happens with the world right now, I am going to uh, ISTA 1 and 2 in New Zealand at Haydn, which Janine is going to be a part yeah. of one of them, I'm pretty sure, either ISTA 2 yeah, or you're doing both, I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, people definitely go check that out um, where you'll get to hang with the two of us if it does go forward. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, yeah. we've got something in Australia coming up as well for those Australian listeners in Byron and Sydney coming up in the first half of next year too. Awesome. Thank you, Janine. Uh, Missy, um, offerings, would you like to share uh, where people can find you and, and what you have on offering? Um, well, actually, I just want to add one more thing. <laughs> yes, that please. Came through just, just with what um, everyone was saying and especially just following Janine and just, um, yeah, like a really... Um, I just felt really important to just let everyone know that, um, you know, they're doing a good job in their lives <laughs> and they're doing the best that they can right mm -hmm. now. And um, that we are all future ancestors mm -hmm. and we've got a lot of work to do as a legacy for the next generations to come. So I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> um, you. But yeah, um, you can find find me. Um, well, actually, I would love to open up the new portal. Um, this is the first time I've kind of um, spoken about it, so it's exciting. Um, you can go to uniteplayperform.co, uniteplayperform.co, and... Um, there's a link there. I'm just gathering my community at the moment, just authentically, and um, you just jump on um, a mailing list. It's not going to be something that I um, – it's just going to be exclusive access to that community um, for all of the immersive experiences, um, actually birthing Unite Play Perform into reality in the next few months. So that website will open up and – have an abundance of um, different experiences, um, ritual tools, um, a play shop, and lots of different offerings on there, which is going to be just so much fun and so beautiful. I'm really excited to um, dress you in my story. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and um, bring it to the world. <laughs> um, 
And I just also want to, um, uh, you know, as an um, as an act of reciprocity, I also just want to support um, a couple of organisations and just give a shout out to See the organisation. It's an Indigenous activist group, and also Yarn Australia, who works with um, connecting non-Indigenous and Indigenous communities in conversation. So I just really want to. Um, use this space as a place of reciprocity to do a couple of shout outs. Um, also Stop Adani um, who work on um, uh, stopping the mine going ahead in the top end um, on sacred lands in Australia. And um, yeah, just wanna um, thank all the ancestors and um, on the Yora Nation land here. And thank you so much for, for this conversation. It was just, so nourishing and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for those shout outs. Thank you for adding that to this container. And just for anyone listening, please do go check out this space that Offerings is creating because I just know anything that I've been a part of, either I've been actually a part of one experience, but witnessed more. It's this jaw dropping beauty and magic that, is woven into these experiences and yeah, just each time I've been just blown away by what you can create and and just the abundance of of inspiration I leave with every time is just next to none so please go check it out Thanks. and Yaniso would you like to share where people can find you and what you have on offering at the moment, if anyone wants to connect with you in that way. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have just rebranded and renamed. We were formerly uh, Vela Souls. Mm. Um, and now we have come to settle at being the ZZs. And so um, I think our website is still under construction, but it's the zzz.com where my wife and I, Yana, um, share mostly on a commercial level um, relationship work, work that, that heals um, relationship between an individual themselves, their emotional space and how they then relate to the next human being, um, mm -hmm. whether on a romantic or a friendship level, that's mostly like the potency of our transmission um, of, of the work that we offer out there and more um, individual works that, that people need along the lines of what I offer and what I speak and um, transmit on on an ancestral spiritual level, people reach out to me um, according to what they feel and what they feel like they will get from me. And we, we then sit and devise stuff. So you could probably find me either through the zezes.com, the website, or um, where I predominantly share a lot of my art and artistic journey is Instagram, um, Nyaniso Zeze, at Nyaniso Zeze on Instagram, um, at Nyanis on, on um, Twitter. Um, and you'll see mostly conversations that I have with my wife about these kind of stuff, relationships, um, what's happening in the world and us, and also a lot of my art. Um, and if people feel to, to chat to me or connect to me um, or seek any kind of guidance or support along the lines of spirituality and ancestry, um, reach out on the, all those spaces and we'll create stuff. Yeah, epic. Definitely go follow Nyaniso as, especially when it comes to the relationship stuff, I know it cuts through like quite potently and you two are, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to make it very modern terms, uh, hashtag couple goals <laughs> is that you two really <laughs> do go into the depths of what the fuck's going on in your life and, and look at the traits that are maybe not desirable at the time and how you can move through them into a more desirable state and and just really have honest beautiful conversation that just is such a beautiful space to take 
and learn from, not take from, to learn from and, and create a healthy foundation in your own relationship with yourself and with your friends, family, and yeah, in your lovership, in your relationship with, with your partner. So yeah, I'm always grateful for what I get from that space with you. Thank you, you three, so much for hey, showing Paisley, up. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Uh, What's your final word, babe? <laughs> What's my final words? Uh, my final words. What's word? coming through for you? I haven't had a chance. <laughs> mm. What came through for you? I want to quickly ask you that if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. So what comes through for me from listening to you three is just always what comes through when I, I talk to people that are in their practice is like, I choose to practice more and be inspired to bring that just I, I I can get very caught up in the materialistic in the like creating my brand and making sales and creating art that's very focused on whatever's going on in my life that sometimes connecting to source and beauty and ritual it takes a back seat and it's never forgotten and never left behind, but sometimes it doesn't get to uh, be in the driver's seat as often as I would like. And conversations like this always bring me back to, okay, you've been lacking on building this muscle and, and keeping it alive and, and making that a beautiful part of myself. So it's time to, to start working that out again and, and making that a priority. So yeah, I'm, I'm, internally grateful for this because i know it will just shape uh my life in a better space and be able to use my platform to to give that to others once again mm. yes yeah, so that's what i take away from this nice <laughs> all right thank you so much i really appreciate you very she followed him and soon found herself falling in a very deep hole into a strange place called Curious Conversation. Curious Conversation. Nowadays, there are still girls and boys whose curiosity leads them to strange places.